in holding this hearing today to examine green buildings and the Green Building Initiative. And I want to thank the panelists, the distinguished panelists, for being here as well. The Energy Policy Act of 205 and, and also the Energy Independence and Security Act of uh, 207 set standards for federal buildings and require them to meet certain conservation goals. Now, for example, these laws require energy consumption in federal buildings to be redu reduced by 30% in 2015, and the use of fossil fuel generated energy reduced from 55% in 2010 to zero in 2030. Again, they're very ambitious goals. Now, a similar um, zero net energy consumption goal for the commercial sector is also encouraged. And these laws and, and the Department of Energy was also tasked to work with the private sector to identify and develop cost-effective uh, technology, technologies in order to reach um, those, again, those ambitious goals. The Office of Federal Highway Performance Green Buildings was established within GSA. Uh, and it was to coordinate with the Department of, of, Department of Energy on, on those efforts to coordinate green buildings activities within the GSA and to develop standards for uh, federal buildings across the board. So, so evidently, the statutory framework enacted by Congress uh, um, envisions an increased conservation in both, not only in the private sector, I'm sorry, not only in the public sector, but also uh, in the private sector. And obviously, to carry out these efforts, a number of federal agencies need to obviously coordinate. Now, this is in addition. Uh, to partnerships with private sector organizations, uh, such as the U.S. Green Building Council, uh, which, which established the LEED, um, L-E-E-D certification, uh, used to, to uh, designate the efficiency level of commercial buildings. It's also very important to highlight the fact that the, uh, that the requirements set by the 207 Act go farther, actually go much farther than just promoting energy conservation, however. And I've mentioned this in other hearings, that the Act sets very strict requirements on federal buildings related to the reduction of energy, water, uh, material resource use, improving indoor environmental quality, and that includes acoustic environments, and also considering the indoor, indoor and outdoor effects of the building. So again, it's, it's more than just conservation. Now, while steps are being taken to meet conservation goals, including the use of LED lighting systems, advanced metering, uh, uh, insulation, a number of, you know, weatherization, a bunch of other number of other technologies, the requirements under the Act extend well beyond conserving energy, and I think it's important to note that. So, I really look forward to hearing from the witnesses today about all of those requirements needed for a green building, and identifying identifying also where GSA. Uh, is on meeting those requirements uh, of the 2007 Act. Again, they're very broad requirements. Now, in addition, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, the, the so-called Stimulus Act, passed earlier this year. It included $5.5 billion for GSA Federal Building Fund and designated $4.5 billion for measures, uh, I'm quoting from the bill, measures necessary to convert GSA facilities to high-performance green buildings. Now, as I've stated, if I stated many times before, I obviously support, I clearly support efforts to reduce energy consumption and to examine ways in which the federal government can help minimize the environmental, the environmental impact uh, of its facilities. That is obviously a very meritorious and worthwhile goal. Now, I've also stated, however, before, that I believe that such efforts must be first scientifically based and proven. Uh, te the technologies must be scientifically proven and based and done in such a way that supports American industries, and here's the big one, and creates jobs. Now, I expressed concern in previous, previous hearings that the focus of GSA funding, including of the Recovery Act, or the Stimulus Act, is on greening federal buildings instead of creating jobs. And the two objectives, clearly, in my view, are not mutually exclusive. But particularly with that stimulus funding, the priority has to be creating jobs. And they're not mutually exclusive, but that has to be the priority, and we cannot lose that perspective. I do hope, as, uh, as Acting GSA Administrator Paul Prouty indicated before this committee in April, that these projects will, quoting from him, stimulate job growth in the construction and real estate sectors and long-term improvement in energy efficiency technologies. Now, um, we've seen it. We've read it in the news. It's common knowledge. Hey, it recovery efforts 
have not worked. The bill has not worked. I mean, again, we were promised that unemployment would be capped at 8 percent. If the bill passed, we are now at 9.5. In my state of Florida, it's 10.2 percent. We were promised the creation of 3.5 million jobs when, in fact, we've lost 2 million jobs since the bill has enacted. Um, which is why I think if I was concerned before, I think there's more reason to be concerned about making sure that we emphasize creating jobs. That obviously, well, something went clearly wrong, drastically wrong, dramatically wrong uh, with uh, that bill or the implementation of the bill or the creation of the bill. I am pleased. I am very pleased, however, to have witnesses here today who may be able to outline for this committee how many jobs have been created through these efforts. And again, I'm a strong believer that construction does help create jobs. What industries have been uh, supported? And how we can, we can reach both improved energy efficiency, which as I said before is very meritorious and needed, as well as job creation and job growth. So, uh, and job growth. So I look forward to hearing uh, from the witnesses on these and other issues. And I, I once again want to thank the chairwoman for her leadership and uh, for uh, uh, making sure that we continue to uh, to not only do oversight, but that continue to lead on these issues that are greatly important to our nation. Thank you, Madam Chair.